Steadicams were once reserved for professional sets only, used for long sweeping shots that were impractical for a dolly. In the 2010s, gimbals became more accessible and affordable for low budget filmmakers, a motorized form of stabilization. Then more recently, we've seen more and more camera bodies house in-body stabilization. But today we're gonna to be talking about digital stabilization that can be found in editing software. In particular, we're gonna be talking about the gyro stabilization that can be found in Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve, which is to be coupled with their Pocket Cinema line. Now, before we do so, be sure to like and subscribe. And now we're gonna head on down to the forest with the Blackmagic 6K G2, just to check out how beneficial gyro stabilization is within the Pocket line how to use it, the best practices, and when not to use it. Several weeks ago, Blackmagic announced and released the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K G2, which is essentially the Mac 2 iteration of the 6K, not to be confused with the 6K Pro, although some can consider this the 6K Pro Lite, as it essentially has everything that the 6K Pro has, except for the built-in NDs, and there is some debate on whether or not the screen brightness is the same as the 6K Pro. However, what this camera does come with, and now the rest of the Pocket line, thanks to dormant technology, which has been activated with the 7.9 firmware is an image stabilization gyro. First, let's compare the Blackmagic Pocket 6K G2 with three different forms of movement. On a gimbal, on a shoulder rig, and handheld. The three shots have vastly different feelings. They promote different production values, but of course, the nature of stabilization across all three shots is varied. The gimbal has little to no shake. The shoulder rig has a sense of purposeful motion and the handheld, well, just looks incredibly amateurish. Now, the issue with the shoulder rig shot in particular is that there's no weight to the camera. Obviously, the camera is a Pocket 6K G2. The idea of Pocket Cinema cameras is that they are very portable and compact. Now, when you're using a shoulder rig, while it is offering uh, a few forms of contact with the body, which in turn is going to make the camera appear more stable, it's, it's still too rocky. So this is typically where we would look to use digital stabilization to help soften that form of motion. Let's open up Resolve and add the stabilization tool to analyze the results. The gimbal, as expected, has reduced any possible form of shakiness. And now we have this perfectly smooth shot. And from here on out, I think it's gonna be best if we just remove the gimbal from our examples. With the shoulder rig, the results are fairly decent, but we're still getting that abstract movement where Resolve is trying to interpret the type of movement within the composition. Overall, however, I would say it's unusable and we'd probably be better served to use this clip in its default state. The handheld shot, however, is well, we might as well bin the shot altogether. The added stabilization has sent it into a frenzy. Three different types of movement, three different results with the default form of stabilization. Now, let's look at what happens when Resolve uses the gyro information from the sensor. Is this in-body image stabilization? Well, no, not necessarily. There's nothing going on inside of the body, so to speak. Instead, when brought in to Resolve and you attempt to stabilize your footage, Resolve will now be able to accurately read the motion information from the now active stabilization image gyro, instead of analyzing the video clip to try and find and interpret what type of movement there may be, as we know may produce sketchy results depending on how shaky your footage is. So by all accounts, now with the 6K G2 and any of the pocket line, if you have updated your firmware, you should be able to produce smoother stabilization than before. But how does that hold up in practice? And you do this by selecting this drop-down menu, and it allows you to change how Resolve is interpreting the stabilization method. The stabilized footage created from the gyro is far from its original captured state. I'd maybe even say that the shoulder rig shot now looks as smooth as the gimbal shot. Even the handheld shot glides in motion. However, and I put emphasis on that word, while the motion has been smooth, the jitterness that has now been introduced onto the footage is beyond distracting. In fact, I now wonder if it would be preferable without any form of stabilization. Looking at the results, I may have been slightly too confident with what could have been achieved. I have a very dramatic shot, so let's look at something simpler with a standard slow walking shot and where my stride is measured and it's a full attempt to reduce movement on my behalf. This is using a shoulder rig.
This is using the default stabilization method. And this is using the gyro information. Again, the gyro is tons better. We do have apparent shaking of the subject from the stabilization, but all forms of camera shakiness has been vanquished. Although you can see, due to the amount of movement that we've had to stabilize, Resolve has zoomed in quite far. So maybe if you do preemptively feel as though you're gonna be using this tool, position yourself slightly further back to accommodate for the possible zoom in. Another thing to note is that filming at 60 FPS also produces better results because it captures more frames per second, which gives DaVinci Resolve more data to work with when stabilizing your footage. So looking at these video clips, uh, the difference between just using the standard stabilization method versus giving Resolve the gyro information is, is completely undeniable. And I think that's one important thing to remember is that you are giving Resolve extra information in order to produce a better stabilized shot. It's not as if you're using a gimbal now. It's not as if the black magic line suddenly has in-body stabilization. You're just telling Resolve, hey, this is how the camera moved during these few seconds, rather than Resolve trying to say, hmm, what's going on over here from the edge data or the color data and so forth. So it's much more practical. However, you are still gonna to wanna to incorporate the core principles of trying to stabilize a handheld shot when you're working with a camera as light as the pocket line. So keep your elbows tucked into your core so there's more points of contact. Use a neck strap where possible, slow and steady strides. And of course, where permitting, you wanna use higher frames per second because a slower, um, a shot which appears in slow motion is going to inherently look a lot smoother anyway. So I've been Lewis with Fidevo. I would like to say, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, but it's been more of a, an exploration into recent hardware and software updates opposed to uh, a tutorial itself. Um, but I'll be here again in a few weeks time. Subscribe, comment and like if you have enjoyed this and I will catch you guys soon.